Do you want a vehicle that has Honda Sensing Standard in every trim level? Where you get it with the 2019 Honda Civic Sedan. And this is a touring model. Hi, I'm Justin Thompson here at Smell Honda in Greensburg, and I want to take you on a ride along on the new 2019 Honda Civic Sedan Touring Model. Let's check it out. Now, new with the 2019 Civics, you're going to see that the front grille actually comes all the way across the, the painted part, where in the 18 that actually came up here as an angle. So that's a new look for the 2019s, along with that piano black look in the front by the Honda symbol here. You're gonna have the uh, chrome accents for the touring model, full LED headlamps, the daytimes and the headlamps as well. You got the HID fog lamps down here. Uh, you do have a nice distinct different spoke for the uh, aluminum alloy wheel this year with the touring model. You can see that the handles have the chrome accent as well. You'll notice the lane watch camera there. That is nothing new to our Honda customers. You guys will remember the lane watch camera you can view as the uh, uh, up on the touch screen. Notice the touring badge here. Same with Honda. You do have the trunk, un, uh, the release, excuse me, trunk release there. A lot of space inside. Floor mats, of course. No pump. You got the spare tire. Jack and tools in order to change the tire. You do have the funnel now. That was an 18 as well. That's so that you can't have gasoline siphoned out of your tank. You actually have to have that funnel if you're going to add any gasoline to your vehicle at all. If you're at the pump, just regularly just put it right into the into the tank. It's right there, no cap. Now these are the 18-inch aluminum alloy wheels. And you have the all-season terrain tires there. You do have the standard remote start, the sunroof. So a lot of the features that you had in 2018 are gonna be the same in 19. All right, guys, remember with the Smart Pass keyless entry system, as long as I have the key fob on me, I simply just walk up to the vehicle put my hand through the handle, it's gonna unlock the door. When I'm done with my ride, I get out and I just hit that black button there and I walk away. So that's my lock button. If I want, I can manually unlock the door if the battery is ever dead in the key fob. I simultaneously pull this tab up and pull the key out. I can manually unlock the door and still get into the vehicle. The remote start, twice on the lock button and then the circle button here, you just hold that down for a few seconds until you see the lights blink here. And if we can back up, you'll see that the lights blink six times in the front and in the back. You do have the LED uh, tail lamps as well. So if you're at the restaurant and you backed into a spot or pulled in, you'll be able to see the remote started. It'll run for 10 minutes and then it will shut off. You do have the ability to program it for 20 minutes after you remote start. If you do the same pattern immediately after, it'll set it to 20 minutes. Well, let's take it out on the road. All right, so we're inside the new 2019 Honda Civic sedan and the touring model. So this is gonna have everything and a little bit more than the 2018 had. So if you remember my video on the 2018, a couple of the things that are new with this year are gonna be the volume knob on the um, head unit here. So for the touch screen, which is great. So we had the volume button over here and we had it as a uh, touch button. So uh, Honda did listen and we got the volume button back. So that's a nice feature. I enjoy that too, so. And then also Honda sensing is standard. So you're gonna have your road departure mitigation, which is gonna keep you centered in the lane. Uh, you're gonna have your forward collision warning, your brake mitigation system, which is gonna keep you from hitting the vehicle in front of you. There's a radar in front of the Civic that actually calculates distance and speed and will sense if you're gonna have an impact and it will apply the brakes necessary. Uh, if you're going slow enough under 15 miles an hour or so coming up to a traffic light, uh, you should stop completely, uh, but uh, there's never that 100% uh, situation, but uh, it's there to operate and save your life if if need be so you do have the adaptive cruise control as well which uses the same radar and all that does is it breaks the vehicle automatically for you and accelerates it back up to the speed that you had set for your adaptive cruise or your cruise control uh, so basically it just breaks the vehicle and resets the axle for you automatically and i'll demonstrate that for you as well also you have the lane keep assist system which works in hand with the lane uh, departure system uh, lane keep assist is mainly used at higher speeds above 45 miles an hour between 45 and 90. When we hit this button on our steering wheel, it brings up the option on the touchscreen 
you'll see ACC, Adaptive Cruise, that's the acronym, and LKAS, which is Lane Keep Assist System, and that button there activated the camera in front of the Civic, ready to map out the lines in the road. And again, I'll demonstrate when we're on the road, when we get above 45, the dotted lines will turn solid white. That's how I know if I start to drift, it'll vibrate the wheel slightly and pull me back into the lane. Through settings, you can set the vehicle up how to operate however you want. So if I went through settings in the vehicle, and I went into my driver assist system setup, forward collision warning distance, adaptive cruise control, forward vehicle detect beep, lane keep assist system suspended beep, road departure mitigation settings. So here you can customize the vehicle and Honda sensing to operate the way that you want it to. You're gonna have your basic features are gonna be the same for the touring model. You're gonna have your home link system on your automatic dimming mirror. Uh, that's good for the garage door openers at home. Uh, you're gonna have all the nice features, the leather interior, of course, with the heated seats for the driver and the passenger, the leather wrap steering wheel with the leather wrap shifter knob. You're also going to have the uh, sport shift uh, paddles here so you can shift up and down in gear. You do have the drive and the sport setting. The sport setting is going to give you more of a peppier feel on the back roads. It's going to change up the gearing a little bit. The RPM level will um, uh, It'll rev up a little bit more. It's gonna use up a little bit more gas, but it's gonna give you more of a sport feel on the back roads, which you can use the sport paddles to shift up and down in gear. If you're in drive and you use these and you let them go, they'll eventually put you back into drive. When you're in the sport mode, you wanna be mindful to shift up and down in gear. If you forget to shift, it will rev up pretty high. It will not allow the vehicle to hurt itself or hurt the engine. It will eventually shift into the next gear, but you need to be more mindful of the shifting if you're in the sport mode. All the same stuff with the electronic uh, emergency brake. You have that instead of the handbrake or the foot brake. For those of you who are worried about the emergency brake uh, being on when you drive away, I demonstrated this in other videos too. If I have the e-brake on, and this only works when I have my seatbelt on, if I'm in drive, if I take my foot off the brake, it's going to catch me. But if I try to go anyways, it'll release the mechanism. That way it doesn't break it. I don't know if anybody's ever driven home and, or driven away with their emergency brake on. It doesn't smell very good, I'll tell you that. Uh, but this will allow you to keep your foot off of the brake, rest it, and whenever, you, uh, whenever traffic gets going again, you just hit the accelerator, it releases brake hold. When you come to a complete stop, whether it's 10 seconds later or an hour later, it'll always lock back up and it will indicate on the dash, hold. So it says right on the right-hand side, brake hold, and I have it activated, it's ready to go. When I come to a complete stop and you feel that kickback, that's when it will lock up, and then that's how you know you can take your foot off the brake. Now, the adaptive cruise control, the, the best way to describe this is when you're out on the road and you're traveling at 65 miles an hour, you're on the parkway turnpike, and uh, you set your cruise control, adaptive cruise control will slow the vehicle down automatically if you come upon a vehicle that's going slower than you, instead of just hitting right into it. You can change the sensitivity level when the vehicle should start slowing down. And all you do is set it just like any other cruise control. So I'm actually gonna demonstrate adaptive cruise control. I have the acronym up on the dash here. I know that it's ready to go. I can hit set and I'm set at 40 miles an hour. And now the camera is actively searching for a vehicle in front of me. So the car icon up here is gonna indicate whether the vehicle in front of me is being noticed by this camera. Right now it doesn't sense it. So if I sped up, just like any other cruise control by one mile an hour increment, if I held it down, it would pop it up five mile an hour increments. And right now it detected the truck in front of me. I'm gonna hit this button, I'm gonna tap this and bring the vehicle closer to me. I am manually bridging the gap between me and the car in front of me. So this is good to uh, get you closer to a vehicle if you're going to maybe use the slow follow mode for traffic situations, which I'll explain to you in a little bit. So right now, my forward collision warning actually and my adaptive cruise control is not allowing me to hit the car in front of me. It's keeping me at a safe distance. And basically all I'm doing is steering. Now, when I get in the fast lane and the car icon goes away, it'll pop me back up to the speed that I had already set. But my lane keep assist system, the dotted lines will turn solid white. If I start to drift, it'll slightly vibrate the wheel and pull me back in the lane like it just did. But it will do that. It will keep you from drifting. If I start to drift left like I am right now, it's gonna vibrate the wheel and pull me back into the lane. And that's my lane keep assist system. So with the 2019, the Civic especially, our customers really enjoyed the lane watch camera and didn't wanna get rid of that. So you still have the lane watch camera, which is gonna be on the right hand side. So anytime I put my right turn signal on, 
I'm gonna get the lane watch camera, which is on the outside of the mirror. That points straight back to your blind spot. That can be brought up anytime by hitting the little button on the end of the turn signal column. And I can view that anytime I wanna change uh, a lane to the right, or if I wanna make sure that the shoulder's clear before I make a right hand turn. You have the Econ button as well. Econ is gonna indicate on the dash with a little leaf there, right above drive. And that's gonna maximize your fuel efficiency when you're out on the highway. So when you're traveling, you know, on fairly straight, even roads, it's gonna maximize your fuel efficiency. So I have my adaptive cruise control set, and this would be in a slow follow mode. So we're under 25 miles an hour, and what's gonna happen is the vehicle's gonna to come to a complete stop. I am not braking the vehicle, by the way. I'm just simply steering it. And this vehicle will eventually crawl up and settle at some point, and then so will we. And after a few seconds, you're gonna see stopped right below the car icon. Now, when traffic gets going again, all I do is simply hit the plus button or tap my accelerator and it puts me back up to the speed that I had set. Now in a traffic situation, what I would do is I would get kind of close to the vehicle. And when you have it set, you can have it set below 25 miles an hour, even at one mile an hour when you're crawling. And when you set that, the camera will indicate the vehicle in front of you and not let you hit it. You can bridge the gap and uh, bring the vehicle or the car icon closer to you by hitting the sensitivity level button and steer your way through traffic. So in that really annoying two, three mile an hour traffic where you keep it in the brake, the accelerator, brake, accelerator, this allows you to move through traffic and I just hit the plus button there. Let's say traffic got going again and then it will stop me. A few seconds later it says stopped and there I go. And then in traffic when it gets going again I hit plus and steer your way through. So this takes a little bit of the stress away. Uh, rest assured if somebody were to cut you off, I know a lot of people are probably thinking what's going to happen in that situation. And what happens is the vehicle's front collision brake mitigation system takes over and it will stop the vehicle. But what's really great, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And I'll tell you, this is really good for even the models that are lower than the Touring. For instance, the EX model, uh, the EXL, even the Sport model, which is new with the 2019s, the Sport model is essentially an entry-level LX with uh, upgraded wheels, uh, leather-wrapped steering wheel, a sportier um, seat, leather-wrapped shifter knob, and all the tech features like your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you have Sirius Satellite Radio free for three months, which you have all that, of course, on the top model touring. But what's really nice, even if you didn't have navigation, you can use your Apple CarPlay or your Android Auto and use your Maps application on your phone as your navigation system. It even shows up on the touchscreen. With the Touring model, you have the auto sensing wipers. You can keep it on auto the whole time. Anytime it starts to rain, they'll automatically come on. You have automatic lights, of course, with the automatic high beams at night. You can keep it on the auto setting and you don't have to worry about chance and draining the battery if you forget to turn your lights off at night. You do have the backup camera. The backup camera is gonna have three camera angle views. You're gonna have first the wide angle view so you can see traffic coming from either side. Your dynamic guidelines change color to give your projected angle into a parking spot. The next one is more of a projected angle in. I kind of like it better. It shows a grid with the lines on the ground. And then I love this one. You have the straight down view, you can back right up, right up against the curb basically without hitting it. The warranty with Honda, you have a three year, 36,000 mile comprehensive warranty, which is gonna take care of all the internal features, all the bells and whistles, all the electronics. Then you have a five year, 60,000 mile powertrain warranty, which is gonna be all your major driving components, your engine, drivetrain, transmission. So why buy from Smale Honda? Well, I can tell you uh, there's many, many reasons to purchase your vehicle from Smail. Outside of the fact that it's a family run business and that uh, they've been in business for a long time and that we have a friendly staff and environment and a non-pressure environment to be able to come in and shop and look for a vehicle and not have to be pressured into something that you don't wanna buy or feel like that you have to buy that day. And as well, we have our customers have the ability to be able to go online and view videos like this to be able to help them in their purchase process. Uh, you know, it's 2019, you know, not everybody can get to the dealerships. Everybody's busy. Uh, it's a very fast paced world and it's a fast paced industry as well. So we wanna be able to be right there in front of our customers. Hopefully you guys appreciate it. I think that most do. And um, we gain a lot of business in that regard too. You know, uh, we're putting out something that other people do not. 
and I think that sets us apart from the competition. But even on this S turn, you know, I'm not taking it too, too, too fast. I don't want to scare Brian, my camera guy, but uh, just real responsive, you know, hugging the turns. You want a vehicle that has a stiff steering whenever you're at higher speeds. And then you want to have a vehicle that has the maneuverability at slower speeds, which Honda does offer. By the way, you have the 1.5 liter turbo engine. That's going to give you 174 horsepower. And that's coupled with the CVT transmission. Now that's going to give you that great gas mileage. You're going to get the combined 33 miles per gallon between city and highway driving. Guys, this engine is great. I have it in my Accord. I love it. It's got a lot of pep and pickup. Uh, if you're looking to have a vehicle that's fun and uh, gets the job done, gets you from A, B, C, D, all the way to Z, because you know Honda's going to last forever. When I pull out here on the highway, I'm going to show you the acceleration. Uh, I'm going to be respectful to the smell, so I'll take good care of their car. Just giving it a little bit of gas. You're going to feel that acceleration. I'm at 50 miles an hour within a few seconds. The CVT transmission, that 1.5 liter turbo, what an exciting ride. It's fun to drive. You guys got to come in. You got to check it out. Take it for a spin. Please ask for me whenever you come in, Justin Thompson. I'll take great care of you uh, and we'll set you up with an appointment. And that's the ride along on the new 2019 Honda Civic Sedan Touring Model. I hope you enjoyed the new features. If you want to take it for a test drive, please visit us here right on Route 30 in Greensburg and ask for me, Justin Thompson, or visit us online at smellhonda.com. Thanks for watching.